Hello and welcome to our next Spiritual Maturity Dynamics class. This is level one and we are in lesson 4B, which is a part of the uh, basics of family life portion of level one. And our lesson here is about learning effective communication. That is in fact what I am doing right now. I am communicating to you. And so it's important I recently was reading a marriage book where it stated that communication was very likely the single most important element in a successful marriage because if people can't communicate, nothing else really works, right? We like to think of a lot of other aspects of a marriage that make it work. You know, does she cook well? Um, is he a good lover? Blah, blah, blah. But really, it's about communication. All these other things pale in comparison. And in fact, no matter how good they are, if communication is not effective and really working, it makes those things just feel like empty without it. All right? Anyway, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. All right, let's get to our key verse found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. And it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Okay, corrupt, meaning that which tears down. But that which is good to the use of edifying. Edifying is one of those Bible words that means build up. I'm building, I'll just be saying those things that build up. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. In other words, give them room to be something less than perfect, but receive mercy and all those kinds of things out of what you are saying. So effective communication, huh? A definition for communication is, is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, or behaviors. And in this lesson, we're going to break a lot of this stuff down to three um, components of communication based on body, mind, and spirit, okay, that we utilize to uh, minister to one another. All right, so it involves the physical body and the messages we transmit through words, gestures, utterances, and body language. Yes, body language, how you use your hands. It also involves the mind with its expressed emotions, feelings, and listening skills. Finally, communication involves the spirit. It's demonstrated in attitudes and actions of forgiveness, love, and tenderness. Poor communication is one of the primary problems that families face, right? Too many husbands tune out their wives. Uh, what did you say? Too many wives resort to nagging and, and to try to communicate their needs. Now hit me, listen to me. Right? Children sulk and pout. <laughs> and teenagers just don't talk to anybody, right? They got the earphones on and they're just, you know, in their own planet, right? This is probably typical of most families. Ugh. All right. The family results in occupying the same residence, but having little in common. Not knowing how to talk to each other, care for each other, or sharing with one another. Right? And, but this was not God's intention. This is not how we put it into motion. Husband, wives, and children should be living in peace and harmony. Supporting. Caring. Right? C conversations should flow. Laughter abound, ha, 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 and differences resolve, which is probably the big one, right? Because it allows everything else to kind of happen. And in order for this to happen, however, we have to learn what God desires in our families so that this ideal, this seeming fiction can actually become a reality in our homes. All right, so let's first of all talk about two types of communication, which were actually mentioned in the verse that we already looked at. The first one is corrupt communication, which is one kind, or negative. So most of us are very fluent in negative communication. It comes out of us quite naturally. We don't have to struggle to do it. In the physical, this comes out in profanity, which I hope none of you are using, foolish talking, coarse jesting, sarcasm, yeah, right, Unholy gestures or negative body language. <sighs> Stuff like that, right? It is often masked in humor. Mm. In the mind or the soul, 
It manifests in arrogance, superiority, anger and rage, ignoring other people or not showing an interest, and rebellious actions. In the spirit, it demonstrates itself in bitterness, unforgiveness, and hardness of heart. And these things are often nearly the, the worst of it, You're probably breeding everything else that you see in the negative realm. So that's corrupt. Sorry, I had that up so long. The second type is edifying. Edifying is the other type. It's positive. Again, something that most of the time we have to work harder on because we focus so much on the negative, criticizing, putting down, finding fault, right? In the physical, it shows grace, a control of speech, gestures, and touch, overflows with praise and thanksgiving. In the mind, it's, a, it's humble, calm, controlled, attentive, submitted. See how I'm talking much more subdued here? I was being really loud, huh? Spiritually, it's, a, it's an attitude of sweetness, tenderness, and forgiveness, right? So we see the contrast between the two types of communication. And again, I want to emphasize that um, corrupt, negative, is usually the forte, our strength, what we go to uh, in a moment of crisis. We have to practice positive. So we're going to talk about three main components of positive uh, speech. All right, the first one is time, which we seem to have so little of. We seem to be so busy. Everything just grabbing our attention, right? Um, the difference between, there's a difference, excuse me, between information and communication. Information is just there. It's just given out. Internet, find it, whatever, right? We live in this information age, right? We just want the facts, right? We might as well hand out a newsletter uh, for our family. You know, Sally is now dating Bob, uh, not Pastor Bob, mind you, uh, but just, you know, Joe hurt his toe on the corner of his bed, stuff like that. However, real communication takes time. It involves those three elements that we've talked about, body, uh, mind, and spirit, and for us to really pay attention to all the things that are being communicated. The words may come out quickly, but oftentimes emotions and attitudes take time to surface. So we may take only five minutes to talk about, you know, to say what we need to say, but it may take hours to really communicate, to get it across so that there's a resolution to whatever it is that is needing to be discussed, okay? So B, listening is the second component, right? The actual, you've heard the phrase, I have two ears and one mouth, so I should listen twice as much as I talk. Most of us haven't got that thing uh, down. All right, so let's talk a little more intensely about listening. First of all, listening takes discipline. A ten, hut, you shall listen, soldier, right? It takes discipline, it takes work. None of us like to work. None of us like discipline. We're just looking for a place to relax, a nice couch to lay on, right, to avoid things. Proverbs eighteen thirteen says, he who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame, right? Too many times when somebody's talking, we're already formulating a response or we've tuned out because we've decided we're not interested in the topic. Two, listening means to be, or excuse me, needs to be taken seriously, what's being said. What the person's saying to you is important or else they probably wouldn't be sharing with you about it. Even if it's a joke, they're wanting attention. They want to talk to you, right? So it needs to be taken seriously. If you belittle somebody in their conversation, put them down, you're really going to clamp down on any future conversation as well. And you're not showing that you're not really listening. And there are six specific areas that need to really have a, 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 an attention given to listening. The first is hurts. It really hurt me. That really hurt me, right? So we have to listen to that. You know, what is the hurt? And, 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 and make sure that we're striving to understand. The next one is fears. I am, a, I'm just afraid. I'm just afraid that this is gonna happen this way, right? We think about that all the time. We're afraid of things. Thirdly, frustrations. Things that get us frustrated. Now again, we're not just accepting what the other person is saying but we need to listen 
so that mutually we can get to a place of where we're understanding and then making it a, a, a decision or conversation about how we're going to, you know, fix whatever the problem is. Next is disappointments, right? I wish this would or that would not have happened. Or, or I wish that had happened. You know, why didn't that happen? And we get disappointed. Again, because we're really expressing things. All these things are really talking about expressing things that are deep within us, okay? Burdens. My biggest problem is this. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what's really challenging me right now, right? And we need to listen, right? Yes. Some people, you know, we, we ask ourselves, how are you doing today? And in reality, we don't really want to know the answer because we could be there for a while. But if it's, you know, in a relationship, especially in the family, yes, we want to know what's really going on, all right? Well, here's a big one, the final one of this group, dreams. I would love to, or one day I'm going to, right? And they're talking about their dreams, right? And you can really encourage somebody when you're listening to what those dreams might be, all right? All right, C, here's the third component of uh, positive expression. It is effective expression of thoughts and feelings. Effective e expression. Not all of us are good. Sometimes we need more practice. Of course, listening, right? Um, we're talking about listening, not just about expressing, right? But, you know, making sure that there's a connection to what's um, being said. So there's, there's parts to this, uh, types of, excuse me, types of uh, ex effective expression that we want to talk about. The first is affirmation, right? That you're important to me and I believe in you. It means communicating active verbal love to your spouse, to your children, to one another, right? I affirm you. You're important. You're worthy of my love and attention, right? So we've got to do affirmation with people. Next is Intimacy, it means moving past concepts and current events, small talk, if you will, to feelings, and then moving past feelings to attitudes, and then moving past attitudes to vision, to closeness. So it's a working process that I really want to get to know this person. I want to get to know my wife. I want to get to know my husband, and I want to really dig deeper, right? Here's an, another big uh, element of effective expression. It's forgiveness, it's absolutely essential, right? In order to release our partner from all the things that they may say wrong, we've got to be willing to be forgiving. Is it possible that they're going to say something that might offend us? Absolutely. And we've got to give them permission as they're searching for the right thing to say and the words to express it, that they, that they might slip up and say something and that we don't just sit there and, and you know focus only on that, all right? So listening is an art. This is three. Listening is an art and you can, yes, you can be, I'm trying to point at the camera, you can be skillful at it, right? So there's some, some contrasts that we want to make here. First of all, hearing, right? That's with your ears here. Hearing and listening are two different things. They're not the same, right? You can be uh, anywhere. I don't want to get ahead of myself as I want to say here. But you can hear things, but not listen. Uh, in the Old Testament, found in Leviticus chapter 14, there's the illustration of a priest and a leper. Leper is one who had skin disease. And when they had skin disease, they were not allowed to be in the general populace. Had to set, them size off, set, them size, set themselves aside and out of, away from the general population. But from time to time, they would experience healing. At least that was the premise for this discussion. And the, they would, the leper that was healed would come to the high priest with a priest, and they would have blood from a sacrifice put on their ear, the right ear. This is my right ear, even though it might be folk looking the wrong way. The right thumb and the big toe. I can't get my toe up there. And this has application, okay? And we're going to talk about it in just a minute here. For, there's a vast bit difference between hearing and listening. I'm sure there have been many times when people have been talking to you, and, and then they go, hey, are you listening to me? And you go, what? What? And you you your ears were biologically picking up the signals, boop, 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 but you weren't hearing it. You weren't listening to it. It wasn't, you weren't focused on it, okay? Uh, the husband who absolutely utters, uh-huh, while his wife is talking to him, right? Your mind can tune up when you're not interested in what's being said. 
and you should, but you should not try to do something else and listen to somebody at the same time. You've got to just lay that aside, right? Put aside, I'm really bad at this. I'm just going to be honest. I'm really bad at this. I find myself multitasking when somebody's talking to me and I'm not listening, okay? And so I got to break that bad habit. I'm just letting you know. You need to turn to the person that's talking to you. Look them in the eye, right? Concentrate on what's being said, right? Your mind should be slowly reconstructing what you're being told, right? Okay? Not just doing the, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah stuff, right? But really listening, okay? You're trying to understand the other person, which leads us to our next uh, phrase here. Grasping or understanding, okay, is critical, Okay, understanding the message that's being given to you. So God places the, the blood on the, whoops, on the thumb, right? And so that means you're concentrating, you're grabbing hold. You're grabbing hold of what's being said, okay? So otherwise, otherwise you're just hearing it, but you're not you know, understanding it, okay? So you have to listen. Observe how they're saying it. What, 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 what's their body position? What kind of hand gestures are they using? All kinds of things like that, right? And trying to communicate. You might need to restate what they say. I think you said this. Is that what you were trying to tell me? Because a person has a picture in their mind of what they're trying to convey, how they feel about something, whatever, and they're trying to take that out of their brain and put it into yours, right? And that's not the easiest thing to do, all right? So, but you're trying to grasp it. And, the, and next is, uh, C is acting. Hold on, I'm trying to get my thing here. Acting upon what is heard. In other words, you're demonstrated that you understand and therefore you're able to respond to what's being said, explained to you. So it's applied to your big toe. That's because you walk with your, your feet, right? When a person sees your reaction and how you act, what you're planning to do, all those kinds of things, they know that you've heard them, that you've listened to what they've said. Okay, that's what's, what's trying to be said. In Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31, it says this, my people come to you as they usually do and sit before you to listen to your words, right? But they do not put them into practice, okay? Listening but not acting will not bring about the kind of family dynamics that you're looking for, right? If people think that they're talking to you and you're never really kind of acting upon what they say, pretty soon they're just not going to stop talking to you. Why bother? They're not going to listen anyway, right? And so that's not what you want to have happening. You want them to continue to listen to you. All right? All right, we're on Roman numeral four. You must learn how to speak. As how, well, some of you are waiting for this part. Yes, I want to know how to speak. I know how to speak already. No? There's some things of speaking that you don't really have down very well. So we want to kind of clarify that for you so that you can speak better, right? You've listened. You've, you've, you've comprehended what's being sent to you. Now you want to speak to that. But there's a lot of practices. You know, we do a lot of corrupt communication like we talked about earlier, right? We get offended. We let, take it personally, whatever. And we're not dealing with the subject matter and trying to find a resolution to it. So we got to learn to speak. Well, here's a big one that interferes with um, some of these things. Gender wars hinder communication. Now, let me just be very real. It says here, I have to wholeheartedly agree, men generally don't listen very well because their first reaction is to problem solve. They listen until they kind of feel like they've got a grasp of the problem, right? And then they, okay, here's the answer. And they just, they just speak over the other person, okay? They feel most comfortable when giving a quick answer, um, even before they're really, really being asked for advice. Women, however, dun, da, 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 often like to verbalize a problem and discuss it in detail. They want to just lay it all out. Whoa, 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 stop, whoa, slow your jets a little bit, okay? They're not always looking for a solution, right? There's a, there's a couple of books. One is, um, in fact, I have one right here. Let me show it to you. You're probably going to see it backwards, unfortunately, right? Is it backwards? Oh, no, it's not. Men are like waffles. Women are like spaghetti. Men are very, you know, get the... Waffles are very got square. They got certain dimensions. Spaghetti's everywhere. Now, let me just tell you, I love spaghetti and I love my wife. But but they're just different. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. You've heard that too, right? Women are a lot of times just looking for understanding. Do you understand? I just want you to listen. I want you to hear me. I want to be heard. They're not looking for the problem solving. So you can see the conflict that's already occurring here, right? 
when a, especially when a woman starts to cry and break down a problem, which, you know, they tend to do more than men do, right? We just want to figure out how do we get that wrench on the waterworks and turn off that pipe, right? On another hand, a distressed woman wants just to be held. They don't want to be lectured or straightened out. They just want to be heard, okay? A, great, a woman's greatest frustration is her husband's lack of communication about directions and decisions. Can you be clear about what you want to do? Which means we have to actually talk. Um, he may know what he wants to do, but he doesn't know how to say it until he's ready to say it, right? He would prefer, really, and here's the thing, you need to set aside a time to talk about these things, right? So that um, his, his, he, he can just sh share what he's going to share, and then he's got to give her time to process it, right? So that they can kind of get together and talk about it and really have no interruptions, all right? So, all right, so let me let me just share, a, this says here, a few gold apples to learn how to communicate better. All right, number one, and there's two words here, so I'm gonna do them a little slowly here. There's use pictures, right? Yeah, you know, flip out your wallet and show the pictures of your kids. No, just pictures. Um, maybe you got something on your on your phone that you, sh you, you, you use to illustrate. Another one is parables, or another word for that, of course, is stories, right? A parables to communicate. Jesus did this by the ton load, right? He used illustrations to help people understand what it was that God was trying to communicate. So come up with creative stories, examples. I think especially in this day and age where we seem to watch, you know, binge watch everything, there's all kinds of illustrations. You've both been sitting watching some TV show. You remember that time that Billy Joe um, kissed Jesse and, and he said this and then she said that and then they went to... Oh, is that what you mean? Yeah, that kind of stuff. You can use these illustrations of things that you have a common... Because sometimes when you're seeing those uh, visual images, they kind of convey a similar... I guess we do in, interpret things differently, but it helps to make the communication. So pictures and parables, right? Number two, choose the time, right? Because early in the morning when you're frantically going around isn't the best time. Or, you know, five minutes before it's your bedtime is not the best time. And the place, to communicate, right? Sometimes in your in, in sitting in bed is a good time to communicate because you're it's just the two of you. I'm talking about a husband and wife, of course. Right? When you're talking about lengthy, deep subjects, you need special, undisturbed time. Otherwise, you'll have interruptions. Mommy, belly hit me, or you know, junk like that, right? Where's my shoes? Can you help me with my homework? And you never get never get anywhere with the discussion. And the length of the time of the problem has been going on will often determine how long the conversation should be. You might really need to sit down for this one for a while, right? Especially because if you get emotional, she starts crying or whatever happens, right? You, you don't want to have an interruption in the middle of that, okay? You want to be able to uh, talk it all out, get to the end, as it were, all right? Number three, communication moves through levels, right? You start at point A, right? And point A is oftentimes casual. Yeah, I was just sitting at the, the beauty salon and talking to my, my friend Jessica and blah, 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 right? And, you know, yeah, you know, you're just kind of getting the conversation started. But then it moves on to contemplative. You kind of get a little deeper. You know, have you noticed lately how the weather has been changing? Uh, uh, you know, whatever it might be, you know, the clouds or the wind's been picking up, whatever. You get a little deeper in the subject. And finally, you get into confrontational. Well, what do you think about global warming? Global warming, you know, and and then there's like a maybe a little bit of a fight that goes on kind of or I think my fingers in there. Fight that goes on, right? And but you need all three of these to enjoy true communication. You got to be able to get in there, right? I'm I'm a firm believer that deep relationships often have a great deal of confrontation. Maybe maybe not forever, but there's a lot of confrontation that goes on because you know, you don't agree. You're two different people. I don't care who two people you're talking about. You both can love God, but you have different opinions about different things. You're going to have some confrontation. Here's the key. If you love each other, if each of you matter to each other, you're going to work through those things through effective communication. You're going to listen. You're going to speak like we're talking about here. All right. Also, your choice of words is very important. What words you use, right? One of the reasons I'm, I'm a big-time anti-profanity uh, person, and I'm sure there's nobody here who's arguing the point, is I just think that people that tend to fall into that 
are showing an ignorance of the language. They haven't taken the time to really think about what it is they want to say. They haven't paused. They just want to blurt out. And oftentimes, of course, that kind of stuff is simply just shock value to kind of gain control of the conversation. It's not like you've taken the time to really choose your words. Words have the power to build up. Again, that's the edifying thing we, we learned about way uh, at the beginning of the lesson. Or to destroy. Okay? They can destroy. You can tear your family apart if you're not paying attention. Okay? Words come from the abundance of the heart, found in Luke 6.45. Oftentimes, once a word has been spoken, it's very difficult to undo it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me is the biggest lie ever spoken. Words actually hurt worse than the sticks and stones, right? Because words get in the inside, and then they, sometimes they won't let go, right? Like a, like a video recording machine, they get in there, and they're just stuck. You got a digital image of what was said. Even if you didn't mean it, even if you slipped up, that's what we talked about earlier about having forgiveness as a component of, of communication, because we have to have a forgiving heart as somebody stumbles through, because nobody is perfect in word, right? Um, number two, but there's some lead in here, it says, we read the verse, Ephesians 4.29. Don't let unwholesome talk, right? Your words are either building or destroying relationships, okay? There's really nothing that you're saying that's not having some sort of effect. It's like you don't care or they're not important or you're, you really love me. All kinds of things are being said by all the words that you're sharing, so we want to be careful what's actually coming out. We don't want any unwholesome words to come out. We don't want anything that's going to hurt somebody that we care about, right? We want it to build up and to strengthen those relationships. Listen, we all need praise. We all need people to encourage us. That was a great job. Man, you look good, right? You was awesome. I, I had something happen the other day where somebody that I work with within the church um, did something that, you know, that... I mean, I'm not saying it was like super huge or anything, but I noticed it and it was awesome. And it took me like almost a whole week to get around to talking to her because that's the first time I'd seen her. But I just wanted to let her know, man, that was, you just really took the bull by the horns in that situation and did it. Just fabulous. I was impressed. And I told her even somebody else mentioned that they were impressed. And, and so I wanted to build her up. in that. So a woman needs praise because she establishes her sense of worth by her family's daily reaction to her, right? Thank you, Mom, for that awesome dinner. huh? A child needs affirmation because he establishes his confidence by those words. You can do this, uh, Joe. You're awesome at these things. Okay. A man needs praise to avoid feeling insecure, foolish, or inferior because we're constantly dealing with those things. Am I looking like an idiot? Honey, you are just doing fabulous. Thank you. That really makes me feel better, right? That we recognize those things. There is, as, as Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 7 says, a time to be silent. Sometimes the best thing for you to do is to keep your mouth shut. In fact, there's a verse in Proverbs, forgive me for not looking it up prior to this, that says, even a fool appears wise when he keeps his mouth shut. Right? There's also another one that says, in the abundance of words, there is no lack of sin. In other words, if you just keep talking and 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 never shut up, you're probably going to say a lot of things you shouldn't have said. They're just going to hurt people. Okay, So there's a time to be silent. There's also a time to speak. right? There's a time to say something. But usually it's when we've taken the time to think about what we're going to say. We had an earlier lesson in this series, you know, talking about um, uh, discipline and such, right? You know, and spanking or timeouts or whatever. And the one thing I always try to tell people is, Take a moment to just catch your breath before you implement anything. What is it you're trying to accomplish? What are you really dealing with? Maybe you need to back up. Maybe you need to pray through. And the same thing goes to whether it's time to be silent, time to speak. Now, silent doesn't mean withdraw. I'm just going to walk away. I don't want to talk to you right now. It means maybe I just need to listen. Maybe I need to process and think about and then say it what I need to say because I'm being led by the Spirit of God to say it. Learning how to, this is a summary. Learning how to communicate is the key to having a successful family life. And I said that in the beginning, right? I'm not the only one saying it. Poor communication leads to disharmony, hurt feelings, and misunderstanding because we're not taking the time. Effective communication skills promote harmony, foster bonding, connection, and increase love and understanding, right? And don't we need more of that in our family life? 
It consists of two more primary parts, speaking and listening, and both are necessary, and there is a time and place for both. Communication, effective communication, can be learned if both all the parties, husband, wife, father, mother, children, whatever, um, want to nurture the relationship. If the relationship is important, I said this earlier, if the relationship is important, I want to communicate because I want to um resolve anything that might be a problem in our relationship. I want our relationship to be close, okay? So as we learn specific ways of communicating, we will find that the family that we're in will become healthier, it will become happier, it will be something that we enjoy, and that our kids will enjoy long after they leave the house, right? Because we talk to them. And let me just tell you something, especially for myself, my examples with my own children. You know, I, I love to talk, as you can see. Not, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an introvert to some degree, but I love to discuss things like this. But one thing that I really feel like that I lacked a lot of times when my kids were, were in the house was I didn't communicate. I didn't let, the, and actually, I didn't allow them to communicate as much as they should have been allowed to communicate. And that really harmed a lot of things. We do a slightly more communication now, even though we're far apart, but it would have been better to do it while they were still in the home. So I just want to encourage you to learn to communicate, right? Learn to listen first and foremost, right? And secondly, then when you speak, take the time to use positive words, edifying words that build up so that, that, you know, that you're encouraging connection within your family, right? God bless.